Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. He is Nick. How are you, Nick? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's it's December. It's I near know. the end of the year. It's my Crazy. birthday month. And as a matter of fact, it's actually my birthday week. And I'm sharing that honor with today's amazingly awesome guest who's having a birthday tomorrow. But by the time this thing airs, that birthday will have passed and come and gone. <laughs> but welcome to DadCast, man. Former BMX writer, probably still riding all the time, and host of MTV's The Challenge, Mr. TJ Lavin. How are you, man? Good, brother. Thank you. Absolutely. Dude, we're so stoked to have you on, man. Thank you for doing this. This is awesome. That's great, man. Great. Absolutely. Love that. Uh, love that room you're in, man. Looking good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, so we are a little bummed. We're supposed to be down in Vegas with you. But my kid came to me and he's like, hey, dad, I've got my first high school basketball game at home tomorrow night. And I'm like, are you going to be Wednesday night and I'm or Tuesday night? And I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be in Vegas, dude. <laughs> so he was all devastated. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to be the good dad. Cancel the Vegas trip. and We'll do the Zoom. Not a boy. So here you know we what, are. You know what the really good dad would have done? Taking him with us. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Just throw them up and, you know, here, go, go, here's some money, go play some video games. We'll be back in a couple hours exactly. and spend some time around in round. We could have called Jordan Farmar up and said, Hey bud, go play basketball, Jordan. Yeah, there you today. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So TJ, the premise of dad cast, uh, we try to do our best to talk uh, all things dad, but we tend to go off the rails on our episodes and talk about pretty much anything and everything that comes up. Um, and by tend to, I mean, pretty much every single episode. Uh, first question we have for you is and i already know the answer but for the viewers and the listeners watching are you a dad i am all right and uh daughter son multiple yes i have a a daughter Uh, i have a daughter she's 22 i adopted her when she was five and uh she's my world i love her she's the best she's the coolest daughter anyone could ever have anyone i ever hoped for i mean she's amazing i i when i when i first met her i was unbelievably stoked and like this is the cutest five-year-old that i've ever seen in my life she would uh she would dress up in her like hannah montana outfit like she didn't love <laughs> hannah montana she didn't even know who that was but she just that's how she rolled like she just rolled like with big boots and hat and the whole kit and like like to go exploring in the backyard and stuff. Like it was the cool, coolest, cutest thing I ever seen in my life. And we had a big dog named Mac. He was a, a Mac truck. He was a big Mac. And he was like, he was a, a Labrador giant lab. And they bonded like you wouldn't believe so much so that when he passed away, she never loved another dog again. Like mm-hmm. my, my dog, I have four dogs now and she doesn't love them. She's like, yeah, whatever. Cause she, and she's 22 and she never got over Mac. Like she loved, loved, loved that dog. So it was, it's pretty devastating for her, but that, that was such a cute bond they had, but uh, yeah, she's, she's the most incredible daughter you could ever ha- hope for. I mean, she put herself through hair school um, and, and it was $19,000 and she saved up and spent all her money on hair school, became a hairstylist. And now she's like the coolest hairstylist in Las Vegas and and works at a place called square and and which is like the coolest uh hair place in las vegas and that like everybody wants to work there and and she went and got an apprenticeship and 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 was like working her ass off just to for for no money and just just like being the understudy of somebody there for a year and change and like she did that just just to be where she's at today and i just like the drive and hustle i couldn't believe it i was so happy and i'm just i'm stoked to be her dad well that's uh that's, that's also awesome, said dude. something about you man you know yeah that's cool man it's great hustle, hustle uh it, it's learned i think it's not uh inherited yeah that's true that's very true so i gotta ask for, oh, for go ahead. jp and i 17 to 22 how did you navigate those waters so we're, we both have 17 year old daughters and it's a uh, it's a trip. It's like my, we, they both got their licenses. They're both very independent. I, my, mine is anyway. I'm pretty sure JP's is pretty independent as well. And uh, she tries to be, but yeah, okay. yeah, tries to be. Yeah. So how do how did yeah. you navigate through that? And does it get better from the, the yes. know it all attitude? And yes, yes, okay. yes. 17 sucks. 
Um, 16, 15 was brutal or 15 was better, but like when you're, when they turn 12, 13 and they don't even know why they're crying, it's hard. It's real hard. Right. So then when 17 hits and 18, it's, Oh, I know everything. I'm an adult. I want to do whatever I want to do. And you're not going to do anything about it. And depending on how hard headed they are, you, you kind of got to let go. Like it's, it's weird, but, but like I had to learn how to let go and be okay with her going out with boys and doing boy, boy things and whatever, whatever, being a little, little bit into them. And it is what it is. Like if, if you're not, then you're going to lose them. And that's the only thing that I realized, like she was so hard headed that she would give everything in the world up just to hang out with a boy. And so I ended up like, meeting the boy and loving the boy and it is what it is you know what i mean back in the day and and that was when she was 17 18 and i was like dude like let go like get over it that that's your own protecting her whatever whatever. let her be her own person and realize that you taught her to be a good human so her name her natural instincts are going to be to hang out with boys right so you can't mess with nature you know like it is what it is like it you just hope that you taught her the best you hope that you 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 like taught her how to act and how how to be and and that she uses everything that she uses that you've that you've tried to instill in her to the best of her ability and that's that's all you can hope for because at the end of the day like you and i both know like it's gonna happen everything is gonna happen and and when it's it's up to you if you want to be on the team or not. And I want to be on her team and forever. So if, if you don't want to be on the team and you want to be the guy that's in the dark and the, the guy that's in the dark and that's just has head in the sand and really hopes that her, his daughter is the only one in the whole world that's not having sex, uh, you know, and not thinking about it. Like it's not that bro. Like it's not. So either, either pull your head out of the sand and be on her team and help her or, just be the guy that's head in the sand and be like, no, they're not, they're not doing anything. She's not doing anything. And, yeah, and that's never going to happen. I and definitely like, want to be on the team, but I yeah. still like to be, be coach, <laughs> you know, Yeah, but <laughs> you, have to, you, you can't, you can't coach her through her entire life. You have nope. to like, you have to let go. It, it's, it's, it's the hardest thing in the world. And something I had to learn the hard way was to let go because one time I got all smart and, and really like, pissed off because she was, I wasn't on the team, you know, and she was, she was going across town and, and hanging out with this dude. And like, and I, I said some stuff that was a little bit harsh and I was like, like, I shouldn't have said it. And uh, as soon as I said it, I was like, man, that was kind of stupid. Why did I say that? And then, and then she's like, okay, cool. You want to, you want to play like that? No problem. Moved out and lived on her aunt's couch and took the bus to work. Like, that's how hardcore she is. Like right. she just said, okay, fine. You know, I, I'll do whatever I want. I'm 18. See ya. And I was like, dude, and there's nothing you can do. Like, yeah. I'm like, that is the stupidest goddamn thing I ever did in my whole life. Like, like what an idiot. Like, why wouldn't you just let go? Like, you just have to, you have to let go. You want to like, you know, keep your thumbs on them and keep them grounded and all this stuff. Like, dude, it's not up to you. You know what I mean? It's not up to you. You think it is. And you think like, just because you make the money and that you do the things you provide. Well, if you, if your daughter is, is anything that like you hope that she would be, she's independent, dude. She's, she's doing her thing regardless, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Like your, your like goal is to get her and fly and let her do her thing. And like, be so proud of her and be an incredible human, be kind to everyone, be as, cool to the bus stop guys that she is to the president of her company and like all those things that you instilled in her you hope that she is and now just let her be that you know so it's like you have to you have to let go and let her do her thing and then be proud of her and and just hope that she makes you as proud of her as as my daughter like i can't i can't say enough good things about how my daughter has turned out and it's it's from little lessons like that and she taught me that lesson herself you know, like 18 years old, she taught me something. I was at, I was 40, 
40 years old at the time. And I, I was taught something by an 18 year old, you know, it's pretty cool. Like, I was like, wow, like that's, that's really that. I mean, Jesus, that, that's a look in the mirror. Right. That's as it should be. I think, you know, it's this whole parenting game. I mean, you've got the one girl, 22. She's now an adult child, obviously. Yeah. Nick is <laughs> got six kids. One of them just barely over a year old. Uh, starting over fresh late in the game. Yeah, I was almost um, done. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah. I got remarried. My wife didn't have kids. And she's like, let's have a baby. So we did IVF and did that whole process and got an awesome little baby. And like, it's just, it's a whole different ball game being right. older and chasing a little one around. And this kid's got so much freaking energy. It's crazy. He's like a little <laughs> rock star. Well, yeah. I, I blame I blame Ben and Brian though. Ben Carey and Brian Hopkins. Like, like he loves them, loves their music, and just he loves to like imitate what what Brian Hopkins does as far as like just being the rock star. And oh, like, that's so rad. Yeah. There goes Nick name dropping Brian again. Yeah, <laughs> he somehow makes his way into every single episode of Dadcast. Um, I myself have uh, again the uh, the seventeen year old. She's my stepdaughter as well. We kind of uh, have similar paths there, TJ. Uh, I she became into my life when I was she was about five years old as well. Her birthday was two days ago. She just turned 17, got her license last week. And well, I can say this now because we've talked about it. I can say it in public now, Nick. She got her license and 24 hours later, she got in a car accident. So did we ever find out what happened with that car accident? Yeah, she rear-ended some guy. Now, the okay. guy shouldn't have been what he was doing, okay. but it was still kind of both people at fault, et cetera, et cetera. But she's fine. The car is not. And that's just a story to tell that, you know, my teenage daughter didn't even have her license a day and she told her car and well, that's a tough one. <laughs> I have something for that as well. Um, All right. Let's the reason do it. That she told her car is because she was texting and that, 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 that's a hundred percent. I mean, I, I would say that's a 95% or greater. Absolutely. Possibility. Okay. But she has admitted uh, to it. Oh, she did. She has not admitted no, to it. Hell no, hell no. <laughs> so that they, they, they don't admit to that. that. That's like, I mean, even my best friend, uh, one of my best buddies named Kyle, he, he, he was texting and driving and, and crashed his car. So, and I knew for a fact, that's what he was doing, but he told me, no. And I said, okay. And, I, and then later on, he admitted it. He's like, yeah, I did. I'm sorry, dude. And uh, so, so that, that's what happened. And the way that you can prevent that is teach her how to drive stick. I think that helps a lot is, is that was the one thing I did for my daughter is I taught her how to drive stick. And then, so she was pissed as hell. Like she didn't want to learn. She didn't want to do it. And then finally she just gave in and that was it. I was like, this is your truck. I don't care whatever you want. So then her friends can't drive her car. Cause they're too stupid to drive stick. And then her, you know, <laughs> and, 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 uh, <laughs> she's the only one. And it empowered her as well. So yeah. it empowered her that she knew something that most people don't these days. Like it's crazy, but the kids don't know how to drive stick. It's weird. And it so is absolutely we, baffling. That was the first thing I learned it's on baffling, dude. I mean, you said your daughter just got her license. It's like, dude, you're 17. Are you joking? What are you doing for a year? Like, I can't believe that she just got her license at 17. Like I couldn't, I couldn't wait to get it. You know what I mean? Like it was, yep. it was like chomping at the bit and I had a stick shift truck sitting there ready to go. And, and, you know, that was my truck and I drove it and it was whatever, but that's, the the one thing that I'm so proud of is teaching her how to drive stick because it it eliminated texting and driving. It eliminated her friends driving her car, it eliminated all that stuff, drunk driving, all that stuff, because she had to be aware and be alert because she was the only one that knew how to drive her car. So it, it was something that was very cool. And uh that's something I suggest you maybe get her next time is say, okay, cool, you got a stick shift now. Sorry. Sorry about yeah. your luck. Uh, a combination of two things. I'm going to touch on what you just said there. Why did she wait a whole year? Well, she was chomping at the bit too. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But unfortunately, COVID, DNV, ah. uh, you had to make an appointment and then they get canceled. And literally the appointment, her first appointment was like six, seven months out. So she didn't have I the opportunity corrected. there. I and stand then, corrected. You're right. And there You're was right. a couple of failed written tests maybe involved in there too, which kind of okay. uh, <clears throat> negated the uh, the swiftness of said acquiring of license. But anywho, she's got it. And now she doesn't have a car. And 
Oh, it's terrible. It's a poor thing. And it, I, she's like, dad, dad, can I drive the, the Tesla? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you crashed your Honda Civic 24 freaking hours into having your license. And you want, you want to drive, you want to drive daddy's car. <laughs> yeah. No, not happening. Let me think about it now. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't even have to think about that one. No. Good. good uh, it, it, it's it, that, that is a, that's a rocket ship. First of all. So yep. she doesn't need to be having that thing. Uh, yeah, that's way too gnarly of a car for for a kid that just got her license. Like it, it's just way too gnarly. Like yeah. especially one that's texting and driving or or rear-ending anybody no for no reason. Doesn't matter. But but um stick shift, man. I'm telling you, get her old Toyota truck so it doesn't break down. That was what and, I learned in man, an 83 Toyota four by man. There you go, brother. 1990, so 91 is when I first drove. I was like 14. That's what's up. Yeah, 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 man. It, it My daughter's first here. truck was a 2002 Toyota Tacoma uh, extra cab, long bed, stick shift. Yeah, and that that's what she rode. She rode that for like three years or four years. Nick, what was your first car? The '77 Volkswagen Bug. <laughs> yeah, nice. all right, nice. all right. That was I a stick all, too. Yeah, I yeah, had it all cherried out, and it was dude, it was sweet. That's a dope car. I, mine was a 91 Chevy S10 4 by 4 Or no, it wasn't 4 by 4 Chevy S10 two-wheel drive stick nice. shifts. But. You guys you guys win. Uh, 78 Datsun 510. Dude, I had a cooler oh, one. I love that 510, man. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, but not in not, not 1992. It wasn't very nah, cool. Now nah, it's well, badass. I traded my bug for a 77 uh, Jeep Cherokee Wagoneer. That nice. was cool. Yeah. So was that, was that her first? Was that your daughter's first uh, first car on the truck that she learned to drive stick on? Yeah, is she? And I'm assuming I'm assuming that's long gone now with the success in uh, the hair styling business. Well, it, it's it's long gone, but now she drives a, a newer Toyota Tacoma. Still truck. a stick? Nope. Uh yeah. Nope. You know, a lot of this generation too is it, it's not their fault really because a lot of cars it, they're hard to find stick. Yeah. They, yeah. Don't, they don't even make a, a Toyota Camry They're these days. They're freaking unicorns now, man. I know. <laughs> they are. Oh, yeah, we, we, did, we got my daughter. Her first car is a Toyota Camry, but it's a stick. Like We're, we're kind of the same concept of you can't nice. text. You can't make phone calls. Yeah, right. Perfect. Yeah. DJ, how did you uh, navigate your way out of that uh, moment when she moved out 18, decided to be Miss Independent? You knew you made a mistake. How, how, did, how, did, how did you work around that and how did that get resolved? Well, I let the moment breathe for a couple of days. First of all, you don't like attack her with love. You know what I mean? You just let her breathe, let her breathe, let it, let it moment. And then, and then it was the hardest thing I ever did in my life was not trying to fix something right away. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, I apologized. I was a bigger man for sure. Like I, I knew that I messed up. It was my fault. And I learned something, you know what I mean? I learned. So I told her and everything, and then she moved back in. And I just changed my behavior 100%, you know, to where it's like, she was like free as you could be, you know what I mean? Like free as she can be. It wasn't my house, my rules, all that crap. Like that, that you learn when you're growing up as, as yeah. a teenager and stuff like that. It's different days now, dude. Like you can't just be like my house, my rules, because it's, it is your house, your rules, but your rules need to be a little bit bendable. Like you need to be a little bit cooler than the average dad if you want to be on the team because you look at your life and look at what you did and how you did it and what who was in the end my mom was always on the team she was always on the team she was always cool she supplied uh you know condoms and all that stuff for me when i was a kid like when i was 17 18 19 years old i don't know if you're doing anything but just in case you are these condoms are in my sock drawer if you need them and then if just put the empty box there if you if you ever run out, I'll, I'll supply for you. And guess what? I never had sex without a condom until I'm 25 or 26 years old. You know what I mean? So I was a very, very like on the team kid and really realized that she was in it for the right reason. She was telling me this stuff for the right reason. She was helping me and, and she did. And I didn't have, you know, a kid out of wedlock right away or anything crazy like that. I could have, who knows what would have happened? You know, like I just, she was on the team. So she taught me that. And, uh, and that's how I was with my daughter, but not quite that, like putting those things in, in her life, but, right. but definitely getting her the, the shot and stuff like that. Like making sure that we're, we're going to have any kids at 22, three, four, you know what I mean? So it was, it was something that 
I, I, I just highly recommend anything like that because you it's went, like you answered my next question. I said, what uh, were the possible odds of uh, grandpa TJ Lavin in the future? And it sounds yeah. to me like that's going to be a few years out, out still. It's a few years out still. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that's, that's the choice that, you know, she was into it. Okay, cool. I'll, I'm down with that. So yeah, cool. Let's do it. Uh, if given yeah. the choice, are are you ready for that? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of us are. We're hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be a young grandpa, I, but I think at the age right now I'm at, I mean, I'm going to be 47 in a week, I think 47 or 48, it's one of those two. And, uh, that is, I mean, that's straight grandpa age right there for having little ones. It really is. In fact, I'm skewing a little bit late. If you look at averages over the course of history, um, and I'm like in mentally, physically, I'm like, there's no way in hell am I that old, yeah. but no, here we are. We've that's graduated, weird, right? Man. It is so I'm crazy. I'm waiting for the phone call from my oldest to like, hey, dad, you're going to be a yeah. grandpa. Yeah. I've got a 22 oh year old God. in the military and he is, he's a little animal. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I'm pretty sure you're already a grandpa. You just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and neither does he. <laughs> right, <my job>. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I ain't going to lie. They, man, those, those late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, well, blur. he just got back in All the States, too, so who knows what he was doing in Seoul. <laughs> Shit. Oh, I'm saying. man. Yeah. You got him all over the world, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you got to teach him right, man. Come on. No raw dog in it. No raw dog in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, the challenge, since I got you on. All right. Uh, how are we doing? Where are we at right now? It's great. I mean, it's it, I... I plan on hosting that thing tom 60 so nice. it, i'm happy i couldn't be happier i'm happy with the the whole damn kit i'm over 30 challenges into the game yeah. and uh like that's 30 seasons of the challenge rather over 15 right. years of of hosting this show and i'm just getting tighter and tighter with the crew and cooler and cooler with the company and i just love everyone so it's it's crazy man i just did a turnaround trip for the president of my company. Uh, her name is Julie Peasy. She's a great, great lady. And, and she is the president of Buner Murray, which is the production company that makes my show. And it was her birthday the other day, on December 4th. And, and me and my wife drove out there to LA, did her party, drove back and came to my friend Michael Borden's house for his Christmas party all in one day. Like it was what a hectic day, dude. Oh, and uh, it was like, I mean, that's how tight we are with, with the, our crew, you know, and everybody that I work with, I just love everyone. So it's pretty damn cool. Nice. Were there any hiccups, uh, last year with the pandemic and everything with the show? Uh, yeah, we, we, we were on hold for about seven months and then we went right back into it. We went to Iceland and, uh, we did Iceland, then Argentina, then Croatia, Mexico, and, um, Panama just now. So it, it was a lot of, lot, a lot of seasons right in a row, man. We were just working like crazy. So I'm, so. I'm digging the Paramount plus episodes. Cause like there's, there's cussing. It's like, it's a little more real than the MTV. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. My wife is like a huge fan. So oh, right. married like seven years ago and she's just like a diehard challenge fan. So it's like every day. Hey, honey, I got to watch. I, I, I DVR'd it. I got to watch it. I got to watch it. So I've been catching up and now she's going back to all like your first episodes and, I'm like, dude, he's so young. That's so oh, cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Hell so yeah. So crazy. Yeah. Like, um, and yeah. She's like, I, if, you know, she was, she was like so bummed she couldn't be here to say hi, but she's like, do you think you can get CT on? I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> Probably not. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, Nick a few months back actually had COVID. Um, it hit him pretty hard, not yeah. as hard as some, obviously, but during his COVID head, I'd like to call it, he, uh, we had an interview with, uh, Josh Berkman, UFC fighter holds the record for the quickest knockout in UFC history. He yeah. uh, challenged Nick or Nick challenged Josh to an actual fight for charity. Real, no, no scripts. They're going to go at it in the octagon. And Josh said, yes. Then, of course, another pandemic came through and things got halted. But anyway, long story short, Nick 
was talking about because we've had you on the list for months and months and months now. We finally got you on. Um, but during that time, Nick said something along the lines during his COVID head about a challenge. Nick, I remember. Okay, <laughs> well, I can be I rest assured it's not going to happen now because he's completely healthy and good and in his right mind. <laughs> oh, wait, a BMX challenge. We should. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. What are, what are you, so I've got so what don't you do Josh Nick Berkman thing? I got like way into health and fitness again. Like I was into it for a long time. So I ended up dropping like 90 pounds and just like I'm hitting the gym seven days a week, training with different trainers. And I'm like, fuck it. We should start asking asking some of our guests if we can do some like jump into their lives and do some stuff that they do, and I'll do it. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> jump on, yeah. If I'm gonna jump on a BMX, hell yeah, I'll do it. You're yeah. gonna die, Nick. I, that would be a really bad idea for BMX. Um, like, like <laughs> you, you. Uh, Is it like a bunny slope for BMX tracks? <laughs> no. Start them off uh, on that. There, there, there's, there are some smaller, smaller jumps and stuff you could start on. That would be cool. But like, if you wanted to come and ride my backyard and stuff, that would probably be a bad idea. Um, actually, I know it would be a really bad idea because the just the drop in is is a couple stories high, and then when you when you drop in. The, the first hit, like just to get into the section, is 30 feet long. So you yeah. have to clear 30 <laughs> feet. It's too far. It's like it's not yeah. working, dude. You know what I mean? No. So like I, I won't I won't go do it right now. And I've I was pro for 15 years. I'm I'm I, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I don't need to do it anymore. I know I can do it if I wanted to, but I'm like, dude, for what? <laughs> for what? Like what so we go, go old school. We set up some little ramps on the street. <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. I mean, we could do something like that. It would be fun for you. But just uh, some training uh, wheels on just in case. Bubble tape. <laughs> Wrap you completely up in bubble tape, then you take that. Yeah, as long as yeah exactly. Helmets, you know, whatever. <laughs> has, has your daughter, TJ, um, because of who you are and your influence and your celebrity status, ever taken advantage of that for herself in any form or fashion? Not once. Wow. She, okay. she is very almost embarrassed about it. Like, really? It, yeah, dude. She doesn't love it it's 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 like something that she does not take lightly she uh i, I mean she's almost uh, it, almost too humble about it you know what i mean like where it's right. like babe like we're, we're doing all right like what the heck you know and she's like no nah. do you get stopped in public often yeah yeah almost every day and with and with your daughter is that when it's like weird for her a little bit, a little yeah. bit. Um, like, like she, she's pretty cool about it. I mean, she'll take the picture or something, maybe sometimes, but not, not. I, I try not to let her be the one that's taking the picture. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I take the selfie with the person or whoever, whatever, whenever. And and uh, and same with my wife. Like, she's real cool about it too. But, but like, they're both like almost embarrassed about it. So it's like, I try not to push it in their face at all. Like, I just yeah. do whatever, you know. That's cool. I'm pretty famous within like a 40 square mile radius of where I live. So uh -huh. it's very small, but in this 40 square miles, I can't go anywhere. And uh, <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the same thing with my, my kid, my son, he's uh, 11 now. So he's starting to become a little more aware of things. And it happened just the other day, walking through the mall, some dude went walking by JP. I was like, bro, as we passed each other. And my son just looks at me and who's that? I'm like, I have no idea. Okay. Like, well, why do you know your name? Like in the radio, I, I work in radio here for the last 20 years. So that's, oh, that's kind of, cool. um, but yeah, it's, it's funny how he, it doesn't even seem to bother him, but I, I'm, I'm assuming the advantage taking is going to happen at any time. Cause it's already happened with my daughter. Believe me, anytime anyone of any influence uh, had a concert anywhere in the state of Oregon, Northern California, Southern Washington, uh, she'd, you know, Hey, psst, did you get tickets for that? Is me and my friends. It's like, <laughs> come on, girl, come on. Yeah, my daughter. My daughter. Oh, really that's so cool. That I've been doing a. Con I've been a concert promoter for like twenty years, and I've got a lot of friends in the industry. Yeah. And Andy Grammer happens to be one of them, and my daughter is like diehard Andy Grammer fan. So the first time he came to Southern Oregon, I texted him like, "Hey, man, can my daughter get backstage and say hi?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." So yeah, that's coming. cool. Like, I would appreciate yeah. if my daughter wanted me to do something like that. I would like that, but she doesn't. She she. Yeah buys her own tickets it's crazy she's like i'm like babe like i know the owner of that venue like i'll get you wherever you want now nah. it's okay dad i got tickets we're, we're good I appreciate that 
I'm just like, okay, but it's funny, man. It's, it's wild. Like how not into that she is, you know, it's yeah. funny, man. And then, uh, but what's even crazier is when she was in fifth or sixth grade, um, I, I was home here and, and this, this couple of, of SUVs pulled up and opened the gate. And my friend back in the day, Jesse Rook, he passed away by now, but he was real cool. Like he was a bike builder and he called me and he's like, Hey man, can you open your gate? And I was like, sure. So I opened the gates and they come in and Jesse Rook is one of the guys. And then this other, these, these two little Asian kids come running out and they're so cute. And I was like, well, what are you guys doing? And they were like, we're here to ride four wheelers. And I go, the track is too gnarly for that. But they're like, it's okay. We're going to ride on the desert. And I was like, all right. And then this guy comes around. He's like, Hey, what's up, man? I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Oh my God. And it was Brad Pitt. And like, so Brad Pitt came over, right. To ride four wheelers. And, and now I'm tripping out. And I'm like, dude, this is insane. I go, Hey, I got to go pick up my daughter because it was time. So I went and picked her up, brought her back. And she rode on Brad's lap on a, on a golf cart out to the desert for about four hours. We were out there just hanging and she's hanging with Brad Pitt. It's so funny. And no one ever knows that and has ever heard that. I've never heard her tell the story. I've never, she doesn't even know or care about any of that. It's, it it's the crazy. And that's the biggest star in the world. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, the, right. biggest, <laughs> that's the so fanciest crazy. dude I ever met. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> who's, who's the, the nicest, coolest dude I ever met. Sweetest dude you could never meet, imagine. Him and Pharrell Williams are the two nicest dudes that I've ever met. Like I don't suppose you got Brad's number still. Wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge. He's a bucket list uh, for for uh, Dadcast. He is he's a an amazing uh, individual, but no, I don't have it. I have his <laughs> old assistant. That <laughs> fair enough. We'll just we'll just do it our the old the old fashioned way and just keep bothering him. I mean, it worked yeah. for you. <laughs> Uh, I'm not exactly Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that all depends on who oh, you ask it in what circles. I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt can't mob the hell out of a BMX bike. Seasons of the challenge. In. <laughs> 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 I did do backflips over Matt, Maddox and Pack, Pax and Maddox went back in the day. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Was, was Angelina fun. around? What's that? Was Angelina around? She was on the phone. Okay. And he was shooting pictures of the texts and videos of the texts and stuff like that. So that was back in the Angelina days. Because so I was, um, yeah, given uh, she had to been on the phone because, you know, knowing her, she probably wouldn't allow uh, someone to do backflips on bikes over their kids if she was paying attention. No. no she wouldn't. <laughs> what has been, and don't worry, I'm going to follow this one up, uh, TJ, with a uh, more positive question. But what has been, and we may have already touched on it, the most difficult thing you've encountered being a father? Uh, that was that that moment when when her and I had that falling out when she was 17, 18. Um, just that moment alone was like, oof, that was the worst possible thing for for being the father. But uh, the 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 second worst thing was when she turned 12, 13, and didn't even know why she was having uh, you know feelings that she was having, why she was crying. Things like that, you know, it's like, damn, dude, like she's, she's really mad at me, but she doesn't know why. And so when she said some, she said some like interesting things that were like pretty hurtful, right. um, you know, like, like, don't tell me what to do. You're not my dad type thing, you know, back in the day where she was like, you're my dad. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? To where she's, yeah. she's real cool. Like, you're really my dad. Like, sorry. You know? And, and that, that hurt at the, at the time, but it didn't hurt as bad as when I messed up, you yeah. know what I mean? So like when I said something and messed up, it was like, dude, you're, you're an adult, you're an idiot. She was a kid. Like you're, you're stupid. So it was, it was better for her to mess up and, and didn't hurt on me at all. Whereas like me messing up is it, man, that sucks. And what has been, if you could even put nailed ahead on a one answer to this question. Uh, what's been the best part, the most fulfilling part of be, being a dad to your daughter in TJ Lavin's uh, life. I, every month she texts me $175 every month in Venmo. And, and I, and I said, baby, what's this for? She goes, my car insurance. And 
every month I get that money and, and every month I'm just so proud that I get that money from her. And I'm like, dude, like, this is badass. Of course she gets it back. I, I go and give her a hundred dollars for a haircut and then go do another hundred dollars for this or a hundred dollars. Right. You know what I mean? Of course she's going to get it back. I'm not that cold, but it's, it's just amazing that she takes the moment to send that because that's her, her job. You know what I mean? That's her. She has to do that. That's her responsibility, her, her bill essentially like, yeah. which I never even asked for. She just does. It. She just does. It. So that's pretty damn cool. Like she, how much is my insurance dad? I said 175 bucks a month. She goes, all right, cool. And that's what I get every month. It's crazy. That's I should have said 500. <laughs> so I, I, wanna, I want you to meet my superstar. This is my littlest. Her name is Avery. She's eight. Hi, Avery. That's TJ. How you doing? Hi. Wow. She's beautiful. How <laughs> and, you doing, Avery? And I got a green screen on. So this is parts of her shirt that are green. That's pretty important. Loving your pigtails. Okay. So remember when we were just on YouTube and I was I was doing a deep dive on my my guest, and, and we saw his episode of Cribs. That's TJ right there. <laughs> She's not normally shy, only to good looking guys. So there you have it. You know, oh, if, if you ever so need any convincing, <laughs> <laughs> if you ever needed any convincing, uh, which you probably didn't. There you go. All right. Oh baby. All right. What are you doing today? Is it? Going to mommy. I love you. Mwah. All right. Good talk. Oh, right, go, go. All right. All right. Come on. I got an interview, baby. All right. <laughs> All right, Nick, is it time? Did you put together a fast I five? I did. All so right. I got, I got fast six today. Ooh, it's oh. like the sequel. Okay. You so, uh, it up last time, dude. So <laughs> this is a quick segment we do. Nick's going to ask you five this time, six questions, uh, yeah. usually pretty simple and straightforward. And here we go, Nick. Oh. All, right. All right. What's your coolest onset location you've been to? Queenstown, New Zealand. Nice. That was that was pretty damn cool. Right on. Can you pass the trivia questions on the challenge? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, even if I'm hanging off the edge of a cliff because I don't have uh, fear of heights. Okay. <laughs> what is the most extreme thing you have seen on the challenge? Um, jumping from car to car when mm -hmm. they were greased up seemed really, really difficult. Um, when it was a jump that was out of reach, and greased up, that was probably a little too hard. That sounds really difficult. Yeah. Um, if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Uh, it would be be kind just to help people remind them that, like, maybe I don't have to be a jerk and honk the horn, you know, like, just be cool, man. Just just be be kind. Awesome. On the <laughs> challenge, do you have a favorite contestant? Uh, Leroy is probably my favorite like contestant that's ever been on the challenge. Like he's my guy. Cool. And then why do you hate quitters? Because everybody and their mom calls me to get on here, get on the show. Like I get hundreds and hundreds of texts every day. Please. I want to be on the show. I want to be on the show. Like from people on, on Instagram or, or Twitter or wherever else, like they just really want to be on the show. And then I have somebody that actually got went through the casting, went through the process of getting on, got picked, and is on the show, and then they throw it all away. And that kills me. Like I'm like, yeah. dude, I mean, you you are gonna regret this so much. And every time they do, like mm -hmm. they regret it. At the second that they they quit, I think almost the second that they quit, the timer starts and it's gotta be less than 24 hours before the their whole life is filled with regret. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's my six questions. What, what, what's right. the typical uh, reason uh, that most contestants quit for? Um, it's, it's, there's a number of different reasons. Um, like if, if it's recently, it's been because they're pregnant and it's like, okay, well, you can't really smash someone for being pregnant and then quitting. Right. Like you gotta be like, Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> like that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but if if it's if it's somebody that's like missing their girlfriend or something like that, then now I'm going to give you a hard time. That that's the number one reason in the history of reasons where somebody quit that I was very mad about. I was like, dude, that's it. And that's where I right, don't take care. Hope to see a never was born. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> right? I love it. That's awesome. Do you have it? There she is. She's eyeballing me from this over there. She always does it. She stares from the from the side. What is dad doing? Um, do you have any uh, interest in pursuing that musical career that you got? Do you still do you, do you, do you slam on those keyboards at all? Um, no, I I don't have any. Uh, no, I I don't. I mm-hmm. I love making music. I like I love it. Um, I just I don't really like think about if that, if that was going to be my job or not. You know what I mean? But right. I never did that. I never did. I never did anything for money. Essentially, like I love the challenge, so I hosted. I right. love BMX, so I wrote it. Like that, I did all that stuff because I just love doing it, and and it is what it is. If I were to do anything in music is because I love music so much. And then somebody was like, yo, you want to do this? And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. So I would do that. You know what I mean? To where it's like, uh, if I were to open for somebody or something cool like that, like it would be awesome. I, I would love that. But, and I've done a little bit of things here and there and I do open mics here and there. I love yeah. that. Um, it's just fun to me. I just like, I like, I, I, I see a lot of talent talented people as well um and some of them i feel like are gonna make it like this michael richter kid that comes to open mics all the time with me is the truth man this kid is amazing he's an amazing songwriter he plays guitar like you would never believe and and the kid just really rips and i think that he's going to be somebody that we're like i told you so (laughs) nice yeah i totally dig watching your instagram lives too you can tell you love doing music so it's it's pretty cool Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's not the best music, but it's just fun. You know? Yeah. Well, you're totally into it though. It's a lot of guys will just go on and do it just to do it. Just like, Oh, I need more followers. I need this. So you do it just because you love it. Man. So you yeah. can totally tell that. So. Oh, thanks man. Thank Appreciate it, brother. All right. So I'm going to finish this up with one very important question. In TJ Lavin's mind. If you were to impart one bit of fatherly wisdom onto any brand new father who will eventually hear this or watch this episode, what is that piece of advice going to be? Stay on their team. That's it, man. It's, 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 if, it's a, if it's a girl, teach her how to drive stick and stay on the team. <laughs> right. If it's a boy, supply the condoms and stay on the team. There you have it. Fatherly advice from Mr. TJ Lavin, host of MTV's The Challenge. TJ, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day, man, and coming on the podcast, man. It's been awesome. Happy freaking birthday, by the way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Tomorrow, thank you both right? very much. Yeah, thank you, man. This, this is awesome. Right on. I appreciate you yeah. guys. Take care, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. And for everyone else listening, watching, please like up, subscribe, comment. If you have a uh, message or a comment for TJ, go ahead and uh, put them down there below. Um, check them out on MTV's The Challenge. And that is that, man. Again, TJ, thank you so much. And we'll see all of you next week. See ya. Much love, guys.